Sandy, and I am here with Steve Heiner. Did I say it right? No, you didn't. No, no. Okay, I know that it was. That's right, it's Steve Heitner. Heitner. Yes. It sounds like Hitler. Okay. Right, it's not. Got it. It's not. Okay. Um, and we are here at the historic Irving Theater, and he is going to be on stage tonight. You probably recognize him, everyone knows him. Lots of things, but mainly, I know. Yes, I played that uh, Kenny. You got that name wrong too. <laughs> I've been practicing those both. You know what? That, you didn't practice enough. Um, Kenny Banya, which is interesting because we pulled up here and on the marquee he has up there performing tonight. Kenny Banya. And I thought, this is so wrong. Oh well, he did it on purpose. Uh, but then I, I was making fun of it, and he said, yeah. "Yeah, but on the other side of the marquee it says Steve Banya." Yeah. Okay. So Steve Banya, okay. Kenny Banya. Uh, sometimes I even have trouble telling them apart. Wow. Yeah. Now it was, was it six episodes? I did seven episodes. Seven episodes. Seven episodes. Okay, so. wow. Um, obviously, the over, last, si over uh, uh, the last, huh? the last four years. The last four yeah. years. Was, was your character something that was supposed to be very short lived and everyone just loved it so much? Absolutely what happened. Yeah. 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 Uh, Jerry, Jerry loved the character. Oh. Yeah. And then he just started uh, jamming. He had, he had me back the next week. Wow. And then he just started jamming Banya into episodes. But the show would always be long, so they have to edit it down. Sure. So a lot of times he'd jam me into an episode, and then he'd call me at my house and go, Sorry. we couldn't fit it in, we couldn't fit it in. I'm like, Jerry, just keep thinking of me. Just keep yes. thinking of me. Yes. But like, the Soup Nazi episode is yes. a perfect example. Like, in the middle of rehearsing during the week, Jerry's like, call Steve, let's have Banya cut in line. Yes. Which is a classic, and that oh, one did stay. You know, okay. so it's a classic kind of, Jerry would just go, I have Banya to me. Especially when it goes in line with the other soup episode. Exactly. The soup exactly. and the soup. It seems so, perfect that I would um, be cutting in line. As, as I watch you during that scene, I keep thinking, how much of that quirkiness were you able to like just kind of pull out and use? I think it's kind of a, <clears throat> there was a neediness, you know, it was kind of an amalgam mm -hmm. of certain comedians you see at the clubs, yes. where they may not have uh, the talent on stage, but they have the desire and the need. Is that what you mean? Right, which was what, was what, you know, so I would just kind of take a punch of the people that I knew that were that so driven, but didn't necessarily have the goods. Uh -huh. right? So it was kind of a, an, an amalgam of those kind of people, and that were desperately to be, desperate to be friends with Jerry, and once I found it, it actually was kind of easy to play. Yeah, yeah, he was just so amazing, the perfectness of it. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, when when you, I heard, I heard about your audition, like how you kind of outsmarted the way the other comics yeah. were doing the, the role. Yeah, the, the, the thing is, you think about the character now, sure. but when I was auditioning, when you audition, you can hear the other actors, like the walls are thin. Yeah. So you're all sitting there waiting for your turn, sure. but you can pretty much hear. Uh -huh. And they're everybody they're doing? was doing it <clears throat> like mad. Me, like you owe me a suit, you owe me, you owe me a meat, you know, whatever it is, right? And I was like, I don't think that can really work. Yeah. So it was really on a dime that I said, what if he's annoying? Because the audition, all it said was yeah. the most annoying person in the world. Yeah, right, right. And it's always, you know, touching when they think of you. Yeah. And the way <laughs> you turned that into something. Yeah, then I turned it into, into a puppy dog. Yeah, yeah, I went with more of a puppy yeah. dog that adored Jerry, and that was annoying. That was so yeah. much. So wow. That, yeah. so wow. that's, and then once I went in and did that, See, because I had auditioned for two or three other parts on Guest Box. Yes, yes. But they weren't quite right. But obviously the show liked me and really wanted to have me on. Yeah. So when the Banya part came up and I came in and I did this whole other thing of this upbeat guy, yes. Jerry and Larry f literally fell out of their chairs. Oh, and I was like, so this is good. This will be the one. Did you have any idea that it was going to have the impact that it had? No, but... I will tell you, while we were, you know, I did the last four years of the show, so it was already number one by the time right. I was involved. Right. And as you get involved and as you're shooting it each week and stuff, you realize at that time you knew you were on an iconic show. Yes. Like it wasn't like, and then years later, it turns out to be this <laughs> iconic show. You knew that. And there are certain lines that I'm sure that you hear people say to you all the time. Right? You mean if I walk out my front door? Yes. Yeah. What do you hear the most? Well, I guess the one I hear the most is that's Gold, Jerry Gold. Yes. Right? Yes. And then uh, Soup is Not a Meal is probably the second most popular one. And, but it's kind of cool to have a character that has that many catchphrases. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then people usually ask, so does that bother you? 
when people, you know, uh -huh. say, I'll go, I always say it in this way. If I go out my front door, yeah. someone's going to scream, that's gold, Jerry. <laughs> if I turn that into a negative, that's probably a stupid choice. Yes. Because it's going to happen anyway. I'm huge. I'm, I'm huge. huge. Yes, yeah, the yes. character, you know, I went from a 40 to a 42. Um, I'm huge. Started working out. Yeah, uh, yeah he, the character just had tons of catch lines. And he even had a catch line early on that we let go for a while. Really? At the very beginning of it, he would speak as a, the best, Jerry, the best. And it was kind of a cadence thing with the yeah, best. Yeah. And then after a while, I was like, let's let that cadence thing go. I think we're hitting it too hard. Yeah. And then on the last, one of my last episodes was the That's Gold, Jerry. And in the script, it said, That's Gold, Jerry. And that's when I said, Let's go back to the old cadence on this one. Uh -huh. That's Gold, Jerry, Gold. And they were like, Yeah, definitely let's go back to that cadence. And that line just turned into. That was so awesome. Yeah. Do you stay in touch with the cast? Yeah, but not like all the time. Yeah. But I would say within a year, we like talk to each each one of them a mm -hmm. couple of times a year. But again, not not a lot. And sometimes, you know, time will go by. I think I probably speak with Michael the least, Michael Richards, uh -huh. who played Kramer and stuff. Sure. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, everybody's got their lives. Everybody's busy. But um, it was an amazing, amazing experience. And the thing is, Jerry, if you had a good, you know, the circle of characters that I was growing sure. up. If you had a good episode, that didn't mean you were coming back. Jerry had to think you like you and think you were a good person. Sure, sure. So by the time we did the finale, which was basically a reunion show, uh -huh. right? That's right. And not only was everybody good, but everybody was cool. Everybody was nice. Uh -huh. And Jerry created that. He wanted it to be his, you know, sure. his baby. Sure. Yeah. Well, out of your long career, you've done so many, so many different TV shows and yeah. just. Isn't it amazing that that's the one thing that people just really forever seem to just cling to is that character? It's an 800, I mean, the show is an 800 pound gorilla, right? So mm -hmm. even in a resume that has hundreds of films yes. and TV, sure. uh, I equate it this way. People are like, well, what, what is your big break? You know, I had three huge breaks before Seinfeld ever happened, <laughs> right. right? And then everybody thinks, well, Seinfeld must have been. Like, but you know, if you're fortunate enough to have a career that spans decades, you have several big breaks. Sure. But people just choose to connect to one yes. or another. Right? The character was just so loved. I mean, you could yeah. not just fall in love with him. Yeah, and I loved playing him. Well, I, it was amazing. It really was, and people just still love it. That's yeah. just it. Yeah. So, There's um, a couple hundred people. That's I know. <laughs> they're, they're hopefully a lot of my friends are up there too. Great. Um, and you started to say earlier that you've got some exciting news. That, Oh, I am a recently married man. That's so exciting. It is. Anything you want to share about that? Um, well, we got married in New Orleans. Uh -huh. uh, about 100, 100 really close friends. I uh, <clears throat> I nicknamed the weekend lucky lady, uh -huh. which was uh, pretty obnoxious. Uh, but then I gave a big speech about how sure. clearly I'm the lucky one in this situation. Uh -huh. And uh, okay. she's, uh, she's, a great, she's a great lady. Awesome. And one of the weird things about, actually I don't talk about this that much, but her name happens to be Elaine. Oh so, my! That is a little odd. How ironic is that? What are you gonna do? That, that happens to be your given name. And of course, you're you know you're out on the road. You're coming out meeting your fans and things like that. Anything else coming up that you'd like to share? Uh, I am adoring the stand-up right now. Like I just put it this way: so, acting is the most collaborative art form in the world. Yes. Right? You have other actors, writer, producer, director, hair, makeup, sets. Right? Sure. Collaborate, collaborate. Stand up is the least collaborative art form. It's just you, writer, producer. Yeah. I'm enjoying the least collaborative art form. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. I'm really enjoying stand up. It's refreshing. And you do get to meet the people that really. Yeah, you know, it's a great thing. Absolutely. It's a great thing. Well, we're so glad you came to Indy. Well, and, I'm happy to be here. You know, as we said earlier, the last time that I saw you was six years ago. I can't believe how fast time goes. No. But that was actually in Michigan when you guys. It was in Michigan. Michigan. Uh, there was four comics from a sitcoms. Yeah, it was. That, uh, was it Mark Price? Mark Price, yeah. yes. Uh, who else was? Um, there was. Um, was JJ Walker? Uh, yes, JJ Walker, and then there was um, Gary Valentine. Gary Valentine, yeah. 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 So that's a good also, show. I know. I know. <laughs> it, was, it was awesome to get to meet all of you. Yeah. Thank you for taking the time to let us get a chance to know you a little bit better. Thank you. And so we're gonna go out and hit the audience right. too, so that all we right. can see the show. Have a drink, laugh it up. <laughs> Again, we are here at the Irving Theater with my favorite, Steve Heitner. Heitner. <laughs> Kenny. Benia. Benia. Ben. 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 Ben
going to get it. I'll get it eventually. I will. <laughs> Thank you again. No worries. Bye. Bye.